Hello, children. Today we're out here with me, Spencer Hoffman, from my wild backyard. And today we are out here at a very unassuming building, looking for some neat spiders here with Rodney behind the camera. Say hi, Rodney. Anyways, uh, I don't know where he went, but we are looking for some spiders that might be up in here, and I'm already seeing a lot of webs. There's a lot uh, of webs in there. I can't, it's so tangly, I can't quite see what species. Uh, one of them actually has a really thick leg. It might be an Agilinid or a, could, it's not a wolf spider, but it could be like a relative. Yeah, we'll see what they are. They're high up there. Um, I'm tall, but I'm not that tall, so I have to get a little creative on how we actually get them down. Um, I'll be able to use my drive pocket here as a little stick. Fairly certain of that. Never seen anything like this. I yeah. actually think this is going to be a lifer for me if yeah, I. Yeah, Southern House, Kugel, Kugel County wow. Hibernalis. Um, let me see if I can chase her down. Okay. You got a tube? Yeah, got a tube right here. Look at you. You are gnarly looking. I had those thick legs. There we go. Boom. At first, I thought it was the fast one. My idea for how to get a second individual down to present to the camera is completely different from Spencer's, let's just say that. Is that another house? That is a big male. Nice. Isn't that one in there too? Or that's a shed? All right, Spencer, do you know what species these two spiders we have here are? Sure do. These are the southern house spiders and gorgeous ones at that. Love these guys. I actually see them quite a bit back home in North Carolina, uh, particularly whenever I'm visiting my old, my old university, because <laughs> I see them a lot on buildings in much more urban environments. And that's exactly how we found them today. Yeah, and uh, I've actually never seen this species up close, especially not big sized ones like this. So this is really cool. Now, you might be wondering if they're uh, all over the place, these things must be super common, right? Well, this is actually the only species in its entire group that has become this common. These are a member of a family of very primitive and rarely seen spiders called crevice weavers. However, in the United States, this is the only species that has made itself a common occurrence in these urban areas. And there's actually a huge disparity of observations of them. If you look on websites like iNaturalist, there are thousands of people who have seen these just on their homes but the rest of these species and this primitive group are very rarely seen and secluded. Now, these are called crevice weavers because they make their very tightly wound webs in corners. Now, this species, the southern house spider, will make its webs up in corners in buildings, inside houses, in crevices and walls, and I've also seen their webs and smaller sized individuals underneath logs. So, they're not totally synanthropic, which that word means living in or around human areas that have been um, urbanized and developed by people. These guys can also survive in basically anywhere where there's enough cover for them to make their webs, which is probably why they are so good at colonizing all over the place in these urban areas. Now one thing I've noticed is this male here particularly looks a lot different than the ones I see back home. They do have a little bit of variation, and because you're finding them in your house and they're these brown or tan spiders, it's really easy to mistake them for a brown recluse. However, you can kind of notice they have a weird, almost tarantula-esque appearance because of their primitive biology. And those big old petty palps right in the front of the face are a huge tell these are not, in fact, brown recluses, but southern house spiders. And that, that a tiny little cluster of eyes right in the front of the face. I'm only seeing four. I don't know for sure if they only have four eyes, but I'm only seeing four right in the front and I don't think they actually see very well. Tiny little eyes and the fact that they're nighttime web builders. I would, I would wager to guess these are probably hunting a lot more by vibration and touch 
than they would by vision. Similar to that of cellar spiders and black widows. Yeah, so you can see we both have one. These are actually the individuals that we caught respectively. The one I have is a male and the one you have right there is a female. Now in most spiders, and it's also probably the case in these, and this is just a weird situation, females are larger in size than males. And even though this male is larger in leg span, the abdomen of the female is much, much thicker than the abdomen of this male. But there's two much better ways to tell the difference because a female who has just laid eggs will probably have the same shaped abdomen as a male who has just eaten a really big meal. The males are much, much paler tan in coloration, while the females are black or a very dark brown. The males also have longer and thinner legs, and in my opinion, the best way to tell the difference is in the shape of the pedipalps, or those two leg-like appendages that are right in front of their eyes that a lot of spiders will use to clean their eyes or also help guide food into their mouths. Now, the males have long, thin pedipalps that they hold in front of their face, tucked in front and extending outwards. At the ends of those pedipalps, they will have structures that are called palpal bulbs that they use to store their sperm before mating with the female. The female has much shorter and stubbier pedipalps that they hold tucked underneath their head, not extended forward, and they do not have palpal bulbs. So that plus the coloration is basically a perfect indicator. Although you have to take these out of their webs to really see them. We couldn't tell if this was a male or a female or what sex that one was until we took it out of the web because the web is so dense that all you could see sticking out are the little tips of the legs. It was even hard to ID species at first. We, we, we saw the body shape of this female with those big old legs there. We actually thought it was some kind of lyco lycosid or lycosoid spider, uh, which of course these are not. <laughs> but you can see they're such, the females, especially such meaty spiders, if they're hidden inside a web, it can be hard to ID the species. So in cases like this, if you can't ID them from afar, uh, spiders like this are usually best left alone because they're actually doing a pretty good job cleaning up pests and annoying insects that you don't want around the house uh, while they're living in your corners.